Now all I need to do is just click on the values that I want to pick up like this interface, the transmit and receive load here, right? And I always have the option to tweak the output based on my specific requirements. Hi everyone, my name is Vivek Sharma and in today's video, we'll be focusing on how we could have critical applications in a network run smoothly. We all know how important optimal application performance is, but identifying bottlenecks could be a real struggle for network engineers. It's time consuming, resource intensive, and often there's a lack of efficient tools that can analyze critical application flow. But fear not, today we'll solve this problem by building quick, no code automation using NetBrain. But wait, there's a twist. The challenge is that we have to create this automation in less than five minutes. So the challenge is on. Are you ready? Do you think we can beat the clock? <laughs> All right, so let's dive in. So I've just switched to the screen where I have my whole application path traced for me, hope by hope, within just a few seconds by NetBrain. And the next thing that I'll need to do is just go ahead and save this path, give it a relatable name, which would be critical app test path. So next I'll relate it with an application or I can always define a new application, which would be critical test app in this case. I'll click OK and I'll now use this app that I've just defined and click OK. So now let's start the real action and build our automation. All right, so back on the screen where we trace the path our critical application is traversing, let's create a no-code automation now. So I could, there are multiple ways I could create this automation, uh, but a quick and easy way is to use quick, quick intents. That's why they're so called. But before that, let's not forget to start our timer and let's rock and roll. So I can create this intent for all the devices parallelly on this map, but a good practice is to start with one device and then replicate it to the rest once it's successful. So I'll just pull out the live data from this device from one of the WAN interfaces to generate my automation. Slash two, and I'll hit enter or retrieve. So once I have the output, which I have now within just a moment, Right, so I'll need to define a variable from this output to, to pull out the uh, intelligible data, right? So I'll define a new parser for that, which has become very easy since some of the re latest releases from NetBrain, because now I have the auto parser for me to define variables. So that gives me, that makes it very easy for me and I don't really have to bother about defining variables. Now, all I need to do is just click on the values that I want to pick up, like this interface, the transmit and receive load here, right? And I always have the option to tweak the output based on my specific requirements. So because I want, uh, I want the specific values of load and uh, transmit and receive load for my logic that I will be defining. So I, uh, I can tweak it and I can give this variable a name. So I'll give this name interface and I'll give this a name and give this a parser a name. Um, trace load parser, apply. And okay, that's it. It was that easy. So I'll just, I'll just add this variable to my intent that I'll be creating. So here I'll be defining the logic. So no code doesn't mean no logic, right? So I'll, I'll still have to define the logic for NetBrain to, to be able to uh, generate the automations to do things automatically for me in the background, right? So I'll, I'll give it a name first. So um, app load check. Automation one, all right, so I'll select an anchor variable. I'll loop the table rules. Okay, and I'll pick up table key. And my logic says that if transmit or receive load is greater than or equal to 204, which is 80% of 255, then I'll, I want to get an alert saying that the threshold has been caused. So I'll say device, this device, interface, oh sorry, this load has crossed threshold and TX 
load equal to this rx load equal to this that's it so i'll set this as the error code for my device and intent and i'll say if that's not the case else if i'll say if the transmit and receive load is still not equal to zero i'll set this as a success message okay just not equal it's not set this as a status for the device and the intent too and i'll hit create that's all i need to do to create my automation my intent it's done and once i've created it i'll just quickly run it and i have the results success i'll save the map in my private folder app load automation and i'll save this intent as a path intent for this specific path sorry intent and that's it all right done i'll open the intent and let's quickly check our timer whoa Phew. that was close but we still got about 20 seconds before we hit five minutes so we're still good so now that we have created our automation in less than five minutes let's have some more fun and scale it to the rest of application path and many more such critical applications. So now let's replicate this intent using auto intent wizard to first create an intent template that we'll be uh, using later to replicate to the other devices. So we'll be using path based replication because we want to replicate to all the devices falling in that critical path. And then we'll define macro variables for the seed command by saying, finding this as a variable and we'll Say that the lookup data for this target path is inbound and outbound interfaces because we want this to be replicated to all the inbound and outbound interfaces of all devices falling on that critical app path so then we'll say next and we'll then install and decode this so what you're doing here is basically uh, finding out what are all the qualifying devices for this uh, to be to be able to replicate this intent and what are the commands that qualify to run on these qualifying devices and we are decoding so if we refresh we can see that six devices already decoded for this intent and then we'll hit finish so we've just created the intent template now so now that we have created our automation and the intent template let's switch over to the automation data table manager and finish the rest of replication process. So I'll go to my folder and create create a new automation data table. Give it a name. Save it. I'll start editing it using the table builder. And then I'll select the method to build the base table which would be application path in this, in this case, because I'm building this based on the critical application path. I'll now select the uh, specific application based on which I want this to be created, uh, the one that we created initially. All right. Now let's select the field um, that we want to be visible in this base table, the built-in fields in, in this, uh, I'm sorry, ADT. Path. To pick up path devices, inbound interfaces, outbound interfaces, source and destination should be good enough. All right, so now let's um, let's select the seed intent template based on which we want to create this replication. All right, so for that let's create a new group and uh, give it a name. And uh, 
will select the method to be based on replication for path and then we'll select the seed intent which would be this okay and we'll then pick up the built-in field that we want to show up on our ADT path intent now we'll select the I will select the clone intent by path variables on path column using the path field which is this set the variable from ADT field which would be inbound and outbound interface that we want to pass for all the devices throughout the application path that we are replicating and then we'll save and build so now that we have created our ADT let's go ahead and run our intent using a schedule we'll set up a schedule to run this up run this using the run intent via timer so let's just use the same schedule daily 6 pm click ok so this intent is now scheduled to be executed every day 6 pm now we've set up the schedule but then let's just run this now for once using this option here so we have some data we can refresh it all right so now that we have run the intent and also set up a schedule uh, let's just create a dashboard for this so we'll use this option new intent dashboard so the dashboard will be able to show us the output of this intent on a single page so we'll give this a name save it to my dashboards it's already selected the the seed intent that we created or the ADT that we created and we'll hit create so we'll add this to a summary dashboard create a new one We'll give this a name All right and we can also define a group title here for the specific um, parameters that we want to monitor for this uh, particular app groups so we'll give it a name so in this group we are tracking the app load and we'll open the summary dashboard. There you go. So it was that easy. So we've just created an intent for a single device, replicated it to the entire group of devices throughout that critical path for all the devices. We created a dashboard, a summary dashboard for that intent that shows up data for all the devices to all that path right now there are so many ways you could enhance such a continuous assessment summary dashboard you could add as many critical applications as many critical parameters impacting the performance of those applications as you want uh, with the power of that brain no code automation your imagination is your limit so in this video today we saw how we could very easily build an automation for checking potential traffic bottleneck for a critical application in less than five minutes then replicating it to the entire application path and create an awesome summary dashboard that could give you a single page view of all the important performance impacting parameters for all your critical applications. Network admins can similarly set thresholds and receive alerts when the utilization exceeds certain acceptable levels. These alerts could help you proactively get comprehensive view of your network traffic, potential bottlenecks and capacity limitations well in advance. So you could then proactively optimize network resources and maintain consistent performance for your critical applications. Feel free to ask and comment if you have any other questions related to this particular automation and dashboard. And we would love to hear your suggestions on any other topics that you would want us to cover in future videos. Thank you for your time and keep automating.